What's going on guys and welcome back to another very exciting video. In this video we are going to be talking about Palantir and Palantir had a very interesting move here today and what we are going to go over in this video is the divergence that personally I am seeing between the stock price, what is going on right now with the market overall, and what is happening with Palantir as a business. So we are going to go over that, the news that came out today about certain partnerships that Palantir has, and then we are going to dive into some of the fundamentals behind the business in terms of revenue, net income, and their EPS and where it could be headed over the next couple of years. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. Let's start off by taking a look at Palantir's stock price. We can see here today, the stock is down almost four and a half percent in a single trading day, a huge move downward. They were actually trading up and we could see from this peak all the way to the low of the day, it was actually almost a 10% downward move. So absolutely insane volatility that we're seeing from Palantir. If we look over the last five days, relatively sideways, down around that 4% mark. Over the last month, again, down around 3.5%. Over the last six months, down around 6%, which is not too crazy, not too bad. A little bit of volatility in here. We can see a downward move around 32% and then an upward move in here of around 70%. And then over the last year, we can see that Palantir is down almost 40%. And even since their IPO, Palantir is actually down almost 15%, 13.26%. And we can see that Palantir basically IPO at the perfect time. They came out, had their initial public offering, and the stock spiked up with a lot of hype in 2020 and 2021. But now what we have seen is the market is looking for companies that are profitable. And Palantir is obviously a money loser currently. And that has hurt the stock in the short term, as we have seen a lot of investors bail out of the company as interest rates have increased and more concern over whether Palantir will actually ever get to profitability. One of the things Palantir has focused on over the last year or so is really building out partnerships with large brands like Microsoft and Amazon. And today, Palantir announced that they would expand their cloud computing partnership with Microsoft on federal government contracts. In a news release, Palantir said this milestone expands Palantir and Microsoft's strategic partnership from the private sector to the public sector, bringing the best in class cloud components to the federal marketplace. And with this announcement today, we have some analysts already reacting. William Blair analyst Louis DiPalma holds an under perform rating on Palantir, and he stated today that we do not view the Microsoft Azure partnership as significant. Palantir already offers its Gotham and Foundry application on Amazon Web Services as software as a service model. Personally, the counter argument I would have to that is that Palantir is still one of those businesses that needs more and more exposure, and getting them on more platforms just gets them additional exposure to more customers that could potentially buy into this type of software. And this is a much needed expansion for Palantir because currently nearly 60% of their revenue comes from government agencies. And Palantir has already shown the initiative to expand their overall commercial business into sectors like healthcare, automotive, manufacturing. And one of the ways they've shown that is through their partnership with Hertz. So Hertz has actually partnered with Palantir to roll out their foundry software within Hertz to help optimize their EV fleet. And we can see the overall growth in their business through the revenue numbers where in 2019, they were bringing in $742 million, where now in 2022, they brought in $1.9 billion. And really, government contracts have acted as a proof of concept for Palantir. We've seen the government look to expand a lot of their contracts and get into new contracts with Palantir to continue using their data analytics software. And since they have done that, they've really shown that there is a need for this type of data analytics. And what they're hoping to do is transition that into the public sector, looking at healthcare, looking at automotive industry, looking at overall manufacturing in general, and seeing how they can implement their data to companies like Hertz and other large manufacturers that need this type of data analytics to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. And when we look at their operating income, we can see that this is on a very good trajectory as well. In 2020, they had a net loss of $1.1 billion. And then in 2022, they've gotten that all the way down to a net loss of $1 161 million dollars. And we can see that from this revenue increase that we are seeing over time and this decrease in operating losses that analysts are expecting the company to get to profitability here in 2023. We have an average EPS estimate of 20 cents, a low estimate of 18 cents, and a high estimate of 24 cents. And these estimates are in a slight uptrend. We can see that 60 days ago, analysts were actually projecting 16 cents of earnings for 2023, but now they are projecting up to 20 
cents of earnings. It will still be interesting to see where Palantir comes in for their next earnings report, which they are expected to announce on May 8th of 2023. And the consensus right now is sitting around four cents per share of earnings. So with all of that said, I do like Palantir for the long term. I think partnerships like we are seeing with Microsoft are what is going to help Palantir grow to the next level. I think it's going to get them more exposure to more customers within the public sector and really help get their software more out there and readily available. And that is what they need to continue to grow their revenue and grow their EPS overall. So that is all my opinion. Keep in mind, do not buy a company just because some random guy on the internet talked about it. Make sure you understand the risks that are associated with it. For me, Palantir is a higher risk company, so I only hold a very small position in Palantir. And as of right now, I'm not really looking to build it out anymore. If it does drop in a significant way, potentially I would add a little bit more. But right now, I'm fairly happy with my position. And you need to evaluate your own risk tolerance before purchasing into a company, especially like Palantir. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button.